Welcome, everyone. I'm Gina Demerg, a software engineer on the Chrome OS team. Today, we will be discussing the most important elements needed to introduce keyboard and mouse support on large screen devices, such as tablets and Chrome OS. Joining me today is Miguel. Hi, I'm Miguel Montemayor, an Android developer relations engineer. In this talk, we'll dive into some context about keyboard and mouse support, discuss various tiers of keyboard support that your app can achieve, then we'll examine how to achieve the support at a basic and a more enhanced level. Over the last few years, there's been an emphasis to support touchscreen interactions, which is an important mode of input on mobile devices. However, touchscreens are not the only input type that users want to utilize when accessing their favorite Android apps across form factors. Some of your users might have motor impairments, such as hand tremors, that make touch interactions on your app difficult. Many of these accessibility users fully rely on non-touch input sources to navigate your app. This includes those leveraging switch access, who utilize physical switches to navigate around the screen. This slide demonstrates how switch access users can navigate the Play Store to select and download a game. The user is utilizing two buttons to control switch access. The first is a small yellow button to navigate the screen. As the user presses the yellow button, the blue focus indicator on the Chromebook screen moves to various subviews within the Play Store app. Once the focused view contains the content the user is interested in, they can utilize their second switch, a large red button, to click on the element. Keyboard support is an accessibility requirement that simultaneously enriches the app experience for all users. For those who can't utilize touchscreens, many will look to keyboard support as a way to continue using your app. Optimizing your app for keyboard and mouse support is a great place to begin your improvement efforts as we strive to build for everyone. There are many ways that users want to use your app, including on foldable phones, tablets, and Chromebooks. Tablets are not just used as large screen phones. Rather, users will attach physical keyboards and touchpads or a mouse to their tablets for enhanced productivity as they type and navigate. This could include a user who wants to scroll quickly through a large amount of content on your app, or a user who wants to type out a long message, which often feels more natural on a physical keyboard than a virtual one. Video editing apps would especially benefit from the accuracy that mouse support provides due to the fine detail needed within an editor. Did you know the vast majority of apps available on Google Play are also available for download on Chromebooks as well? As we expand our scope to consider Chromebooks, we see the keyboard is a vital component built into the device. Therefore, adding keyboard and mouse support becomes essential to expand your app's reach across all large screen devices. Keyboards are crucial for large screen users. On Chromebooks alone, approximately 90% of Chromebook users use apps with a physical keyboard and mouse. With that percentage and over 270 million active large screen Android users today, developers have hundreds of millions of reasons to optimize their apps to support the input methods that these users are utilizing on their large screen devices. Google has already done a lot of the heavy lifting to enable keyboard and mouse support in apps but there are a few things you can do to make your app stand out. Let's look at some of the work needed to achieve different levels of quality when it comes to physical input to support your app. At Google, we strive to support developers on the large screen journey by identifying and organizing key items needed for keyboard and mouse support. In this talk, we'll focus on large screen input. To learn more about other things discussed in the quality tiers, check out the talk, Three Tiers of Large Screen Quality on Google Play. There are different levels of keyboard and mouse support that your app can strive to reach. Tier three is the most basic level of keyboard and mouse support where obvious large screen experiences will be functional. Tier two builds off the basic requirements of tier three and begins thinking about how layouts can be adapted to utilize large screens. It also enhances the physical keyboard and mouse support that was introduced in the basic tier. In today's talk, we will discuss adaptive layouts at a high level. But for more details on the subject, check out the talks, Designing for Larger Screens, Canonical Layouts and Visual Hierarchy, 
as well as the talk Compose Implementing Responsive UI for Larger Screens. Reaching Tier 1 indicates that your app is at the best level of large screen support. Not only are your layouts adaptive to large screen sizes, but you've differentiated how your content is received on large screens to optimize the additional screen real estate. Additionally, you reach the best and most enjoyable experience for keyboard and mouse users. Due to time constraints, we won't be able to dive into every aspect of these tiers. However, we've selected the elements most relevant in each tier for keyboard and mouse support. Tier 3 also referred to as large screen ready, is our basic level of support. Some highlights of this category include selecting text with a mouse and switching between physical and virtual keyboards. Tier two, also referred to as large screen optimized, is our next level of support. This tier goes beyond the basic support to add some large screen specific features that will create a more enjoyable user experience. Some highlights of this category include tab navigation, setting focus groups, adding visual cues for keyboard focus, custom visual cues, mouse wheel zooming, and hover states. Tier 1, also referred to as large screen differentiated, is the best level of large screen support that your app can reach. Reaching Tier 1 means you've completed all the requirements for Tier 2 and 3 in addition to some additional items. We've highlighted the following categories within this tier. Custom cursor icons and context menus. Another category of this tier is to add a comprehensive set of keyboard shortcuts, which helps create parity with any equivalent web or desktop versions of your app. We don't have time to dive into the code for this topic today, but more info can be found in the large screen quality guidelines. Now that we know what the different tiers entail, let's walk through some basic tier three items together. To create a more native feel for mouse users within your app, it's good practice to make relevant text selectable. At Google, we've done a lot of the work for you to accomplish this. To enable text selection for a block of text, you can wrap the element within a selection container composable. In this code snippet, we wrapped our text object in a selection container. Now, the Android framework will handle the rest for us to enable users to select and copy this text. To ensure a smooth transition between physical and virtual keyboards, you should ensure your app can handle both use cases without causing the app to restart. Switching between these two modes of keyboards is important because a user could connect a physical keyboard while your app is open. On a tablet, this could mean that a user has plugged in an external keyboard via USB or Bluetooth. On a Chromebook, a user might flip their device from tablet mode into the standard desktop mode, meaning that they've gone from using a virtual keyboard to a physical one. To implement this, developers can leverage the Remember Savable API, which will automatically save your state across configuration changes, such as a keyboard being connected or disconnected. By having access to your current state across recompositions, your app is able to handle any keyboard input gracefully. Now we will dive into the keys to achieve a more enhanced level of support with Tier 2. Allowing users to move focus to actionable items on your app via the tab button and arrow keys not only improves the user experience for power keyboard users, but switch access, talkback, and Chromevox accessibility users all benefit from a solid tab-supported navigation. Enabling tab support for quick navigation between actionable items in your app improves your app's user experience across the board by helping everyday users optimize their workflow while also expanding your app to be more accessible. To achieve tab support in your app, you can utilize the on preview key event modifier, which enables you to intercept hardware key events when the component or its children are focused. This is how we can check if the tab button on a physical keyboard was pressed and then request that the focus manager move focus to the next item. This can also be done for the directional arrows as well. Another enhancement for keyboard support is to create more intuitive navigation. This can be accomplished by setting focus groups on the most critical navigational aspects visible on your app. 
On this slide, we've shown how focus groups create a clearer navigational experience for users. On the left screen, focus moves to all elements in the top row of clickable elements before moving to the larger chips. And on the right screen, focus jumps back and forth between the top row of elements and the chips, creating an unclear navigation path for tab users. To implement the clear order of tab navigation that we've demoed, we can wrap elements inside a focus group, which we've done in this example for the filtered chip A, B, and C objects. This causes those elements to be given a higher priority before focus moves to other elements on the screen. This helps ensure that the order of your navigational elements are the order that keyboard users would expect. Not only is it important to make actionable items focusable via tab support, but it's also important to make the currently focused item easy to see. To accomplish this, you can make the border color of the focused element thicker and optionally update the outline color to better match your app's UI. In the example on screen, a red focus indicator is moving back and forth between the card objects in the first column. This focus indicator is a visual cue that helps users easily identify where focus is placed on screen and can improve the accessibility of your app. To pick the best and most accessible outline color, you should select a focus indicator color that has a good color contrast ratio to the background color of your app. A general guideline is that a 4.5 to 1 color contrast ratio will be a great ratio to set anywhere in your app. To implement this support, you can utilize the Remember function to store the state of your object's focus indicator color. You can then utilize this saved outline color whenever your object is recreated or focus has been updated. Additionally, you can utilize the border modifier to specify what DP you'd like your outline color to be set to. Sometimes, developers need to go beyond basic modifications to meet the desired visual specs for their app. When this happens, developers can implement custom visual cues. You can define custom visual cues by first creating a custom indication class, which we named My Highlight Indication. Within this class, we've overwritten the Remember Updated Instance function, where we send a remembered state of the My Highlight Indication instance. My Highlight Indication Instance is a custom indication instance class that overrides Content Draw Scope's Draw Indication function. This function is responsible for drawing the actual outline of our custom visual queue. We can then take this code and apply it to the object we want to have the custom visual queue added to. First, create the My Highlight Indication object. Second, create a mutable interaction source object, which controls how the focus indicator looks in various states. Once these two objects are created, they can be passed into the indication modifier. A common way mouse users like to zoom into items is via the mouse wheel or trackpad. Implementing this support is an important way to elevate the mouse experience on your app, especially if your app contains content that users commonly zoom in on. To implement this change, developers store the current scale and the current state as variables, which can then be applied to the object they want to zoom in on via the modifier. To better call out what action a user will interact with, we can apply indication to elements so they will react when hovered over. This will be useful when users are trying to find their desired content and quickly interacting with various elements on the screen. Hover indicators help show users what elements they're about to interact with and helps them focus on a single item within a potentially large amount of content on the screen. To implement this, developers can use an indication modifier to store a saved highlight state. First, create a highlight indication, which reuses my highlight indication object we created in a previous slide. Then, Similar to creating custom visual cues, create a mutable interaction source object, which will manage the hover state. Pass both the highlight indication and the interaction source into the indication modifier and set the hoverable modifier using the interaction source we created. You should now have your hover state added for your element. Last but not least, we have tier one support. 
Tier 1 meets all the qualifications of both Tiers 2 and 3, but builds off this to create additional experiences to help differentiate your app for large screen users. Updating the mouse cursor icon is a great way to indicate how you'd like users to interact with a given element on screen, while simultaneously creating a more native mouse experience in your app. There are many different pointer icons available for you to reference within the View Pointer Icon class. Common cursors include the arrow icon, which is used by default throughout your app. There's also the crosshair cursor icon, which is commonly used when users need to select precise portions of the screen. The text icon, also referred to as an eye beam, is the icon commonly used to indicate an element is editable or can be highlighted for text selection. Finally, the hand icon is commonly used to indicate that a given element can be clicked on. To implement this cursor icon support, developers can create a pointer icon object using the desired cursor icon type within the view pointer icon class. In the example on screen, we've created a reference to the hand cursor and assigned this to be the specified pointer hover icon within the cards modifier. A more advanced feature is introducing context menus, which contain common actions that your users may want to perform on that given screen. These items could be anything relevant to your app, such as editing the given item, opening up the settings page, or directing users to a quick way to send feedback. A good way to introduce this context menu is via a right click of the mouse. To implement the context menu, you can create a box object to hold your context menu. This box object can contain things like text, icon buttons, and more. For the sake of brevity, the code display just shows the box containing a drop-down menu object, which contains various drop-down menu items. Each drop-down menu item contains text, a method to handle the on-click, and optional leading icon. You can place as many of these drop-down menu items as you need within the drop-down menu. Optionally, you can also add a divider object, which adds a thin line of separation between the two drop-down menu items. In the example on the screen, there's a divider between items 3 and 4. That completes our discussion on introducing keyboard and mouse support for apps. We are continuing to expand and deepen our large screen support and guidance. For the most up-to-date information on material design guidelines and guidance on large screen quality, please visit links on the screen or description box. Thank you for all your interest in improving your large screen experience for your apps.